Okay, next one here is evidence of a broken mind from Two and a Half Girl. So this is the debut album from Two and a Half Girl, which is kindly sent to us by guitarist and vocalist Dan from the band. So Two and a Half Girl are a quintet or a fivesome from Utrecht and have described themselves as having their own mix of emo, punk and rock, full of raw vocals and infectious melodies and are not afraid to voice their opinions on personal and sensitive issues. The band consists of Anne Hamerix on drums, Chris Walthouse on bass, Dan Lukerich on guitar and vocals, Juliette van der Laak on lead vocals, and Pim Kruiming on guitar and vocals. Uh, apologies if I've <laughs> destroyed those names. <laughs> So, first of all, I'm I'm really glad they've sent us this because I don't know if we would have heard it otherwise. And spoiler alert, it's fucking excellent. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fucking excellent, man. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. out, of, out of all albums I've listened to, I've listened to this one the most. It's yeah, it's it's pretty amazing stuff, you know. The album's pretty aptly named, you're absolutely right, you know, in, in your kind of description about you know, the, the subject matter and stuff of that, you know, they, they, they don't shy away with, from dealing with some pretty kind of heavyweight issues such as relationships, sexuality, struggles with mental health and stuff of that. But the musicianship, the musicianship, <laughs> the musicianship, the production, everything about this album is proper top tier stuff. The first two tracks on this album, 80 Minutes and Fire, yeah, they, it just hits the ground running. The lead singer's Juliet's vocals, you know, so commanding that it kind of really prompts you to kind of really sit up and, and listen to, you know, their, as you said, you know, they're, they're raw, they're angsty, they're visceral. It's just, it's it's great. Like, you know, as I said, everything about this album is just fantastic. Um, the guitars is something else that kind of really stuck out for me. There's so many kind of we hooky parts that yeah it's some really interesting kind of hooky parts that just stick with you and you know really enjoyed yeah i think those um the, the, the sort of lead female vocals they, they make the hairs on the back of my neck stand up Absolutely. on that on that first track 18 months when they when they when they when it kicks off um, see kind of... yeah and it's like they're quite gravelly i've kind of referenced like brody dow um, yeah, maybe, I, like Amy Interrupter yeah. uh, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, the, the, there's just something about those vocals; they're brilliant. And um, you know, you get these gang vocal chants as well. They combine with the kind of stabs of guitars. It's sort of classic kind of punk rock sounding riffs. You know, there's there's bits of like, like it's like it's emo post hardcore. Rock, uh, punk rock, pop punk, some alt rock, maybe a bit of like metalcore and hardcore on there as well. It's just yeah, all all these kind of. Um, I mean, I've I've listed like a whole bunch of bands that I've heard bits of like there's bits of Paramore, the Interrupters, some Forty One, Lit, Phoenix TX, Newfound Glory, Blink One Eight Two, Rubin, Every Time I Die, Lacuna Coil, Funeral for a Friend, Linkin Park, Tusky, Mabina Galore, Sleep with the Sirens, Rancid, The Distillers, Melon Colin, Three Days Grace, AFI, Four Years Strong. Like there's all of these kind of the li- the list the list's endless, isn't it? It is yeah. endless. Like just all these cool like all these cool guitar bands. It's it's like I've written it here. It's like it's just it's just I wouldn't say hit. That sounds really crass and shit. But you know, what I mean, it is. It's just like fucking banger after banger, isn't it? Like younger years. I think that's the third track in the album. That's the one I've kind of said. You know the the. The riffs that, that open that up sound like every time I die. I I got a, a proper like Pantera Pantera's walk feel to <laughs> yeah, it totally. as well, <laughs> which which I loved. But, like, yeah, again, so much to say like <laughs> about the the kind of guitars. And it's got that massive beat me. down at the end of the song as well. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. What what other kind of songs you stood out for? Well, like 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 you said, it's kind of. Like you say, sort of hit after hit after hit. I mean, 
you, you kick off with 18 months, you've got that those those sort of gravelly vocals, and then then you get into fire, which kind of throws in some cleaner, poppier vocals, as well as as those kind of those gravelly vocals. You know, it's got a massive chorus, like huge riffs. There's some some pretty cool vocal lines in there, um, like the the things that slip off my tongue or come out of my mouth wrong. It's just sort of like stomping drums, chainsaw guitars, and I think, yeah, Younger Years is definitely a highlight. Self-Made Suffering as well. It's got probably one of the heaviest and catchiest riffs on the album. I've, it kind of reminds me of a song by Sleeping With Sirens called Leave It All Behind, which is which is an absolute banger. Um, and I can imagine that in particular just, just going off live as well. I think yeah. um, 70 actually is is a big one because it's it's got that... <laughs> You know, it's it's about not being accepted for your for your your sexuality essentially, and it's like it it's sounds a, really a bit vocal like on that, which I can't remember, like because I was listening to it actually whilst I was driving home tonight. Yeah, I can't remember. Is it friend or fam? Something like friend or family? Oh, I can't remember. I won't do it justice, but it's yeah, it's brilliant. It's really catchy as well. Uh, I the the big moment I've written down from that is like there's a kind of voice sample. That, that talks about prosecution of same sex relationships all over the world and then it kicks into these like shout shouts of I still can't be myself in 70 countries. It's like it's such a big moment. And then that's much of the song sounds like something off a refused refused uh, shape of punk to come as well, which is never a bad thing. That's never a bad thing because it's a fucking <laughs> class album. Yeah. Uh, search searching for relief, the next song that I've written this is a Billy Talent song, right? I just, I don't know what it was about the the kind of opening gang vocals. I mean, it's it's great. I thought it was brilliant. I think it's a guitar tone as well. I've not, I've not said Billy Talent, but I can see where you're coming from. I've, I've gone yeah. with sort of um, some forty one where they go a bit more metal, like um, like the Hell song, something like that, like that. Mm. And you've got that chorus it goes day and night no daylight feeling stressed searching for relief and it's just yeah you could, i mean i was singing along i was just singing that to myself before we started recording like that that bit so <laughs> that's kind of the proof of how catchy it is um the weird the the, the next one the, the weird thing i've written uh, color blind it opens with kind of like a soothing kind of echoing vocal part and i've said it sounds like eternal, <laughs> like the song "I Want to Be the Only One." Like it's got this kind of, it's like a. How does that go again? It's like a choir, you know, the one that goes, "I want to be the only one to hold you." <laughs> <laughs> but it's the opening. Yeah, know that, so. You know that yeah. song, but it's the I opening song. of the song that's like it's like a, <laughs> it's like a choir. Yeah, and and that's the same as this song. But whereas "Eternals," I want to be the only one. It, you know, it's a nineties pop song. This this turns into like a driving pump banger. Ex, pump ex. punk banger. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. It could have gone either way, but um but they decide to to turn it into a punk banger. And it's got like right in the middle of the song, it's got an absolutely raging guitar solo. And I I wrote down that it's like it's the kind of solo that you dream of being able to play. When you when you start learning guitar, it's like if you could play that, you'd be like, I've achieved my goal. <laughs> like it's so good. My mine was remember when I was playing bass. Like mine was that you can call me Al. I'm pretty sure you said that you would uh, <laughs> give me a blowjob if I managed to. to, to, to that's learn cause, it. That's because because I knew. It's because I, I knew you would knew never achieve that. <laughs> <laughs> similarly, I've never achieved like. The ability to play us that a, a solo like the likes that you hear on um colorblind so there you are <laughs> the moral of that story is never make promises that you you, you think you, you can't have keep. to <laughs> or you think you might have to keep in the future um, <laughs> black sheep was another good good song yeah i felt as if like the album kind of opens up it's you know, get a bit more, a bit more of a kind of expansive, kind of self-reflective and kind of spacey number, whilst retaining that kind of trademark and characteristically angsty energy, which I thought was another 
a really good song, Life in Overdrive. I kind of felt perfect, perfectly sums up sums up the album. It just yeah, it's, yeah. I, I've I've just said it's like life affirming pop punk at its best. Yeah, and it's another it's another song where I'm like sounds so familiar and I can sort of almost hear the song that I'm comparing it to in my head and I just can't quite get to it and it might it might not actually sound like anything it might just be that it makes me it gives me the kind of same it reminds you yeah, yeah. Um, you get that it, vibe or you know I was listing all those those bands earlier and there's there, sure there's elements of kind of several of those on the more kind of pop punk side um, in, in Life in Overdrive but yeah that's it like what a good what a good song that is and it's kind of you know it's got a huge like massive kind of gang vocal sing along part as well it's just yeah a really really massive like ending to the album yeah I love that so it goes without saying Sned what have you given this? I've given it a 9 or a 10 hmm. that's what I've given it to I think I think it's very very good. And there, there's the odd bit here and there that isn't as good, but you know, like every song on here is 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 great. I think I've picked out maybe a couple of bits where some of the vocals aren't quite as good. But yeah, I mean, I, I, there's not I mean, any of them. No, there's not. I, I, but I did quite like the juxtaposition between the female and male vocals. I always yeah. always quite like that. I thought it was done very well within this within this album. Yeah, I think there's maybe a bit. Of, I think it's on practice what you preach. There's a wee bit like one of the sort of vocal melodies on there is a little bit weak, weaker. But there's like yeah, there's not a lot to criticize in this. It, I mean, if you if you like this kind of music, like obviously you fucking love it. Obviously, if you're not into this kind of stuff, then you're just gonna be like oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not listening to that. But if if you grew up on this kind of music or you, you're into this at all, like even the slightest bit, then this is like. A really like wonderful example <laughs> of this kind of music, definitely. Is it going in? I don't know why I'm doing that. Is it going in? Is it going in to the the ten out of ten? Well, we both give it a nine, so <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's a nine, nine or up. ten. Did you? No. I said nine or ten. But we'll yeah. go we'll go with the common consensus and continue. Yeah, I mean <laughs> it's uh, yeah. It's a it's 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 a really good album, but I don't think it's I don't think it's quite there, quite a ten. But it's a very strong nine. Perfect. Yeah. So that is um evidence of a broken mind from two and a half girl.